Hello, beautiful, and welcome to Mom's Talk Sex. I'm so honored that you're here. I have the beautiful Tabitha with me here today. Hey, Tabitha. Hello. How are you doing today? I am doing great. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited for you to be here. And you guys, I'm so excited for you to hear our hear Tabitha's story because I think what she's going to share is something you haven't really heard a lot of before or explored. And I'm really excited to just learn more. So how about you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah. So my name is Tabitha Sweeney and I am a coach and I've coached authenticity for the past decade. Um, I had a fit background in fitness before, and basically I got divorced in 2020, like mm -hmm. first day of COVID, same day the world shut down. I told him I was done. We had two little mm -hmm. kids. Um, I still have two little kids. They're only seven <laughs> and nine. And I then took the next two years and I really just focus on me. It was about healing. It was about myself. I didn't do any dating. I didn't do anything. And then beginning of last year, so that was 23, I last January, I actually started putting myself back out there into the dating world. And lo and behold, I started, you know, with the healing that had come, I started thinking like, there's things I think I want to explore. I started realizing I was raised very strict Catholic. Um, with a whole lot of shame and guilt around sex. And, you know, I had an experience that led me going, oh my God, I didn't know sex could be fun. Like, yeah. whoa, wait, how, I didn't do this before. Like, right. Because. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Like, do you feel like that is a part why you ended up getting divorced? No. Okay. I do not. Um, I always yeah. wonder, like, when you hear the stories about people raised re really religious, it's like, you don't have sex until you're married, then you have married, and you don't even know what you're doing. And so then, you know, you just don't even know how to satisfy yourself or your, your partner. And I feel like I wonder how many divorces end because we just don't even know, you know, how to connect on that level. You know, for me, I feel like, well, so I did have a lot of sex before I was married, but it was one of those things where I was like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. And then you'd shame yourself. And then you, and it was really, for me, it was about the external validation. It was a game. Yeah. Like it, it, that's, it was never, I was not in any committed relationships. It was all one night stands. None of it was like extraordinary. Um, yeah. So it was really interesting to have an experience where I was like, whoa, I've been missing this. Yeah. And then kind of set out, to see what else was out there. And about five or six weeks into my journey, I actually met my now committed partner um, who was at the same exact place as me. We were both, he was kind of, and he actually was in a position where he didn't have sex before he was married. He was came from a very, very strict religious background. And it was exactly as you described, like had no idea what he was doing the whole thing we got together and it's funny we started like we are nothing this is not a relationship we are just we are just exploring we are just seeing what's out there but we lived four hours apart oh. and um yeah we just I mean we jumped straight into all kinds of stuff like our third date was in a sex club oh so I've never been to a sex club is it it's, worth it? It's fun. <laughs> I mean, it's like, tell me more. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I mean, I was terrified. We walked in the door and I literally was like holding on to him for like dear life. And he's like, I have to pee. And I'm like, you can't leave me. Like, no, you can't leave me. <laughs> Somebody's going to jump my bones right here. Yeah, Like I was, I, I have a very, like, it seems like I'm very extroverted, but I'm really not. So the idea of like standing there waiting for him was like terrifying, but we survived. We all survived. <laughs> it, was all, it was a lot of fun. We go back regularly now. Oh, cool. Okay. So tell me more about this because I've never been to a sex club. So what is it exactly? Like, can you maybe just tell us what it's about? So what it's there's member that you have to have a membership okay. to get in, um, which, and it's, 
not expensive. And then you buy your tickets for the each event. So they're open Friday and Saturday nights. And when you walk in, everything is BYOB. So you bring your own booze, which we did not do the very first time. So we were stone sober wow. <laughs> on our third date in a sex club. <laughs> um, and you walk in and it's, you check your, you know, you check your liquor at the bar and it's kind of like a normal club atmosphere. There's a stage, there's a DJ, there's booths and some little cocktail tables and stuff like that. And then there's doors when you get around the bar that open, that take you back to all the playrooms. And so the way the playrooms work is you can have the, as much or as little privacy as you want. Okay. So like you can leave the windows, the curtains open, you can leave the door open and there's just like a chain that goes across it, meaning nobody can come in. Um, or you can close the door, close all the windows, close all the curtains and have complete privacy. Yeah. So, and then they have, you know, they've got private rooms. They've got some big rooms that are for, um, different things where you can like play just with your partner, but you're in the same room as other people, but you can't join anybody. They've got other rooms where like, if you walk in here, you basically are giving consent just by entering. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that is so cool. All kinds of, yeah, they've got toy rooms, like with like the swings and like, it's all kinds of stuff. It's fun. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to check this out. Yeah. This is my plans for the weekend. I'm going to write it down. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so go back to, so you're with this guy, third date, sex yeah. club. So you took it pretty, pretty quick, pretty fast, right? I mean, yes and no, right? Because we lived four hours apart. So it was yeah. kind of like we talked every day yeah. um, and it was nice to have somebody else who was also kind of exploring. But I think what we both found is there's a whole lot of talk online and very little follow through. Yeah. So like, you know, you'd be saying there, there was every guy I talked to was like, yeah, I want a threesome. And not one of them was, no. And then I met this one who, so funny, the very first time we met, he drove four hours to meet me. Cause he's like, will you meet me halfway? And I was like, not the first time. Like, what am I stupid? Like, no, he drove four hours. And we had a great time, went to the hotel after and like, it was just okay. Right. Like it was, I don't know. It didn't meet expectations. Okay. But then like a week or two later, he had told me that, you know, he was a virgin when he got married and he had only been with a couple people. And I was like, hold up, (laughs) wait, I, okay. If you never need to see me again, that's cool. But like, I need a redo because you cannot think that was my best effort. So that's actually how everything really got started was me being like, wait, 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 you can't, I didn't know that. I didn't know I was supposed to be taking the lead. Like yeah, nobody would took the lead because everybody was kind of hanging back and right. I didn't know any of this. So it was really interesting. And we went from being absolutely nothing and just two people who kind of built trust and wanted to explore along the same things. Um, to somehow we broke all of the rules and the agreements that we had set in place and are now fully committed, but still non-monogamous. So it's a very interesting dynamic. Yeah. So what does that mean really? So for us, it means that we emotionally are monogamous. He is my person he is the one that I call if I'm in trouble. He's the one that helps me solve my the problems. He he's my person. But there are we can each have experiences without each other, but they are simply physical experiences. Yeah, just for the physical part of it. For the orgasms, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just So do you feel like it's just as good as when you're having it with him? I'm really curious about this. Not usually. No, right? Not usually. No. Interesting. But it's funny because I 
you go, I go, you go in spurts, right? Where you're like, yeah. And then you go in spurts where I'm like, huh, I'm good. I don't need to see anybody right now. Um, but it, it, there's been a lot of different experiences and we've gotten to experience a lot of kinky different things by keeping it open. Okay. Share yeah. some more. <laughs> what is your favorite? Oh, my favorite. I don't know. I mean, I, he has, he is definitely, oh my God. It's so weird to be talking about some of this. He has definitely FaceTimed in to watch um, when he's been like out of town and it's weird because we have a rule where we don't, if anybody that we play alone with doesn't meet yeah, our partner, yeah. right? Like, and that was a rule I actually started when we first got together. Cause I was like, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Like I was definitely not secure enough at that point yeah. to, you know, meet the a 20 something that was following me the next day. Like, no, thank you. Um, right. But now I'm like, we could change that role. And he's like, let's keep the role like it is. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but so we've, we've done that. Um, it, it's just, it's fun and exciting in all kinds of different ways. I don't know. I love it. So you're, you're a coach, right? And you coach mm -hmm. couples. So how do you tie this in? You know, I think a lot of couples probably get to a point in their life when, you know, the sex isn't as great. We're kind of shift. We were kind of not, you were shifting in our, you know, mm -hmm. in our places in life. And we don't really know how to spark that spark again. You know, we hear about like swinging couples that swing and couples that decide to have an open relationship. So what is your advice? Like, how do you, what do you, what would you tell couples that are in that kind of like, I, I want to say like fork in a road? Yeah. I start by telling them like, nothing is off limits. Like you've got to get rid of the preconceived notions of what is supposed to be and how it's yeah. supposed to look. Because if you would have told me a couple of years ago, that I would ever be sitting here committed but non-monogamous with a guy who still lives two hours from me like never never but it's the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me and I feel like it's allowed me to be more authentic so a lot of what we do is we start by kind of laying out the fact there are different options yeah and no dynamics outside of monogamy look the same I've seen couples where one is monogamous and one is not. I've seen couples. The The coolest thing about non-monogamy is it's not set by society. Yeah. There's no expectation. So you literally come in and you create your own rule book and your own expectations and your own boundaries because society hasn't set that yet. And yeah. it's amazing. So that is one of the things that we kind of talk about. And then we get into, you know, what feels comfortable? What are fantasies? Do you guys openly talk about some of this stuff? In a lot of times I hear from men who say, she'll never, she'll never go for my fantasy. She'll never, she'll never say it. And I'm like, well, have you tried talking to her? No, she'll never go for it. And I'm like, okay. And part of what I'm coaching them through is if we don't feel safe, our default is no. Right. Our default is to protect us. So if you're, you know, asking if there's something you really want to try, you have to have an actual conversation about it and you have to set the boundaries almost up front so that it's known that she is safe, so that it's known that she has control in this, so that it doesn't feel like pressure and the amount of times when we start peeling back and we realize, oh, you're still attaching so much shame to this. And we can strip that shame away and you can watch people completely transform. Yeah, It's amazing because for 20 years, I knew my fantasy. I mean, I had it. I knew it. I never would have said it out loud. I mean, oh. I could even say the word threesome out loud like a couple of years ago. And, and now, you know, 
our third date was a sex club. So I mean, like, okay. So what did you personally do to get to this point? Right? Like if, if a woman in your shoes is listening to you right now to us right now, and she's like, well, how did you get to a point where you can say threesome online on a podcast and talk about your sex life? Like, how do we get to that point where it's not shameful? And I can tell my partner what I actually want, what, what I actually desire. I think a lot of it starts with trust in your partner and trust in yourself. Like you have to trust yourself. You have to have the relationship with yourself that I know that this is okay. But the other part is honestly, if you get on a few apps, you start very quickly realizing there are lots of people out there who want the same exact things and it's Mm -hmm. not as taboo and it doesn't seem as far-fetched and you don't seem so alone in Like, I remember being like, well, how do I say this? Like, how do I even, how could I possibly? And once you start putting it out there, you're like, oh, other, the, once you start talking about it, other people are like, oh, me too. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought about that. But there's a whole community that like literally lives underground with non-monogamy and like open sexuality as far as what they're willing to try. And the one, the one piece of advice I will say is know your boundaries before you go into anything. Like yeah. don't compromise those. If you know, you know what you're comfortable with, you know what you're willing and not willing to do. You don't have to compromise that ever. So would you say that there's more couples there than open to, you know, open the door to adding another person into the bedroom or to trying, you know, oh. something different when we peel the, the shame and we peel them? Or do they find it in their own marriage and they don't need to bring somebody in? I think it, it's probably pretty even. Mm. Um. But I think if they find it within their own marriage, the quality of intimacy like skyrockets. Yeah. And so sometimes what we find was that desire to bring someone else in was never really about bringing someone else in. It was about filling a void. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And not really about curiosity. So that is, and then for the other, there's other people where that was, that's a huge piece of curiosity. Right. And they want to experience that. Interesting. This is so great. Like, thank you so So much for this. Yeah. It's so fun. And it makes you think of the things that maybe you haven't thought about and how to spice up your marriage and also talking about these topics and bringing them, like you said, communication with your partner is key because if you communicate and you can find a place that's open and comfortable, maybe your partner has the same desires. Maybe they have the same fantasies, right? And so maybe you're scared of sharing this because of the shame, but if you could just step out of that a little bit. So maybe you can share one tip that can help you like overcome that shame. One tip to overcome shame. I think it's, it's recognizing, sometimes I think if we say things out loud, it can help us put it in perspective as opposed to being in our head. So I often say, I was so embarrassed to say what I wanted, what my fantasy was out loud. But if I thought about it, if somebody else were to have said it to me, I would have been like, wow, that's so cool. And you're so brave for sharing that, right? Like I would not have thought it was weird or strange or like, oh, I can't talk to you anymore. Like not at all. So sometimes I use that as kind of like my litmus test. Like, okay, if somebody said this to me, how would I react? So why am I expecting everybody else to react so poorly? Yeah. I love that. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank Thank you for sharing that. 
And thank you for being here. Like this was really an eye opener. And I feel like it invites a lot of people to, to go play, right? If you're curious, if you're interested and you don't know what you like and you don't know what to do, maybe just go to the sex club, you know, and yeah. you can play with it and figure it out. I love that. Yeah. There's so if, uh, oh, sorry. Oh no, there's a, there's so many different ways to explore and experience yeah. different things. Right. That's so true. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. So if our listeners get, want to find more about you and the work that you do, where can they find you? I am on TikTok at Tabitha Lynn Sweeney. Oh, okay. And you can also find me on my website at TabithaSweeney.com. Okay. I love this. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. And if you go check out the sex club, let me know. I would love to hear your experiences and what you took home from this conversation. So thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll tune again with you next week. Bye.